Welcome. God be with you. And also with you. We are gathered on Capitol Hill as people of faith to pray for a just and compassionate federal budget. Inspired by a common spiritual conviction that God has called on all Americans to protect the vulnerable and promote the dignity of all individuals living in society. We are an interfaith coalition aiming to protect those struggling to overcome poverty in the U.S. and abroad and to exclude programs that protect people in poverty from the U.S. budget deficit debates. Today's vigil is part of an ongoing faithful budget campaign to urge the Deficit Super Committee, Congress, and the administration to exempt programs that assist at-risk families and children in the United States and abroad from budget cuts. Last week, senior religious leaders wrote the Deficit Super Committee members and, and Congress urging them to look with fairness at potential avenues, avenues toward fiscal health with a focus on job creation, revenue increases, and reducing unnecessary and dupl duplicative military spending and not at the expense of those who can least afford additional cuts to their life necessities. In addition, we are joined today by thousands of people of faith from across the country who have begun to organize in states and localities to pray with us for a faithful federal budget, many of whom are participating today and tomorrow in a national call-in to the Washington offices of their senators and representatives asking for a federal budget that breaks the yokes of injustice, poverty, hunger, and unemployment throughout the world while affirming government's role in serving the common good. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Eternal God, you have called us to your ministry, to preach and live by your word and to show mercy. We praise you, O Creator. At the beginning of your work, Proverbs tells us that you created wisdom Wisdom that lives with prudence and attains knowledge and discretion. Guide us to strive for good advice and sound wisdom, to gain insight and strength. By you, kings reign and rulers decree what is just. May they govern rightly. We diligently seek your wisdom to walk in the way of righteousness of justice, loving you and your creation, our neighbor and our neighborhoods. May we be wise, righteous, and just stewards of all that you have created. Forgive us when we fail and grant us your peace. Keep your spirit with this gathering as we meet and gather together so that in everything we may do your will. Help us to welcome new things you are doing in the world and to respect old things you keep and use. Guide us lest we stumble. Lead us as we work together to care for your creation. And may all we do be done for your glory. Amen. Amen. It is in this context of lifting up the budget concerns of our nation, as well as being faithful to the call of the Spirit to move in new ways and old ways, that we started this prayer vigil, I guess it was in June, sometime in June, and did it through a very hot July <laughs> until we finally got a debt deal, a debt ceiling deal that did to some measure at least protect the most vulnerable. And as we listened deeply to where we were being called as an interfaith group, we realized that we needed to keep up our prayer, that prayer anchors our concern, that prayer is the place where we go to for inspiration and where we listen deeply to the movement of God within. And that is what has brought us here today to start again the vigils, being quite grateful that it is much cooler than it was in July, but also quite grateful that we are joined by so many people who share our same concerns in our hearts. 
both that are present here and that are joining us around this country. And if anybody has specific concerns that they want to bring of their concern for the budget, uh, just a sentence or two, does anybody want to add what they bring today to this prayer? Oh, be bold. <laughs> for common sense to prevail as they do this and they we don't duplicate and we don't do things because it's in somebody's district and they want to look good that they look at what's for the good of this nation which is the good of all the people a common sense approach not just a district approach for the good of all no level early childhood early childhood and the thing that is the biggest resource for our future we know and I think integrity on the part of the legislators integrity for all of us, especially on the part of legislators. Continue to be. Pardon? Help for the unemployed. Generosity to the poor of the world. Generosity to the poor of the world. And for all of these concerns that are both expressed and unexpressed, let us treasure them in our hearts and open our spirit to receive the Lord's guidance as we move forward. Reading from the prophet Isaiah. Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness did not forsake the ordinances of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast? But you do not see. Why humble ourselves? But you do not notice. Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose? A day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not the fast that I choose to loose the bounds of injustice? to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and to bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you, the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and God will answer. You shall cry for help, and God will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairers of the breach and the restorers of streets to live in. bold and shout out any of your reflections on this reading, please do so. <clears throat> Lift up your voice like a trumpet. <laughs> turn your pages over and then 
will continue a litany for a faithful national budget that we have been using, which was originally prepared by the Marino Office of Global Concerns and certainly covers much of what we're concerned about. Let us pray. With the be our God. 20% of all children in the United States live in poverty. We cannot leave our children a legacy of rising debt, nor can we leave them a legacy of rising poverty. We pray for a just and compassionate budget that reflects all our children from hunger and homelessness, from inadequate education and health care, from poverty. Our God hears the cry of children who are poor. Blessed be our God. Many older adults in the United States live near or below the poverty line. Social Security and Medicare are their lifelines. We cannot neglect the very real needs of our senior citizens. We pray for a just and compassionate budget that protects our elders from poverty, financial insecurity, and inadequate health care. Our God hears the cry of our seniors who are poor and vulnerable. Women in the United States are disproportionately served by social safety net. Women rely on many of the programs facing drastic cuts, from Medicare and Medicaid to SNAP and TANA, from SSI and Pell Grants to domestic violence prevention and nutrition and child care. We cannot ignore the real needs of women in our society or fail to address the systemic injustice that perpetuates their vulnerability. We pray for a just and compassionate budget that protects women from poverty, financial disparity, and accurate health care and social danger. Our God is the cries of women. Blessed be our God. With an unofficial unemployment rate over 9%, millions of U.S. Americans are struggling to meet their most basic needs. Yet an unjust federal budget could reduce or eliminate assistance for unemployed families. We pray for a just and compassionate budget that responds to the needs of those who are unemployed protecting them and their dependents as much as possible from the overwhelming anxiety, financial insecurity, and loss of self-esteem. Our God hears the cries of those who are unemployed. Blessed be our God. We live in a world that is intensely interconnected. Loving our neighbors requires that we promote the global common good. Yet programs that respond to HIV and AIDS, extreme poverty, food insecurity and overwhelming debt, violence against women, natural disasters, and other urgent needs are likely to be severely cut. We pray for a just and compassionate budget that responds to the needs of our brothers and sisters around the world. Our God hears the cry of those who live in the margins of our world. Blessed be our God. God's good creation continues to suffer from our use and abuse of its precious gifts. The enforcement of laws that protect the integrity of creation could be severely compromised by unjust budgetary decisions. We pray for a just and compassionate budget that protects the integrity of creation. Our God hears the cry of earth. Blessed be our God. For the gift of vision to see a way forward that is just and compassionate. Give us vision. For the gift of conviction to work with vigor and faithfulness for a just solution to the crises we face. Give us your courage. Spirit of God, renew the hearts of all of us who are gathered here. Inspire Congress and the administration to act justly and to protect our most vulnerable brothers and sisters here and around the world. Reinvigorate, reinvigorate our nation's vision of the common good. May God, our Creator and Parent, breathe into us new life and new meaning. 
May the wisdom of God breathe into us new hope and new awareness. May the Spirit of God breathe into us a new spirit and a new understanding of the world in which we live. Amen. As a WISC community, we will continue to meet weekly on Tuesdays at 12.30 here on the front lawn of the Methodist building throughout the, this deficit super committee process uh, through their November 23rd deadline and through the December 23rd vote of Congress on their recommendations. So I invite each of you to join us and to be here at, at 12.30 on Tuesdays. As we said in the opening, we are being joined by people of faith across the country. Uh, we are encouraging people to hold vigils outside of their members' district offices targeting the super committee states. If you are here as a visitor or from one of those states and are interested in perhaps taking a leadership role in planning one of those vigils, or you're working with an organization where you know you have um, people in your denomination or organizations that are there that would be interested, um, please see either me or Shanta uh, over there who gave our opening prayer. We're working to try to organize in those states. All building towards a super vigil on November 13th that we hope to hold here in Washington in Lafayette Park uh, on Sunday afternoon and be joined by prayer vigils throughout the country that, that will be happening at the same time. So stay tuned. We'll try to keep everybody updated uh, with further communications uh, that we are working on together. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. Amen. May the Lord lift up her countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve God. Amen. Amen.